Shark Nation, what is good with y'all? And welcome back. I'm IC3, 3000 to be exact. And listen, man, we have got another episode of your Seattle Blue Sharks Dynasty playing on the NCAA 06 Next Mod. And we're now in episode 10. So if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and catch up on all other episodes, man. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of them. Sharks are doing some really cool things. So if we take a look at last week's matchup, man, you can see the Sharks played the Bruins. and We came away with the dub 21-16. And we see our guy right here, Jared Glover, came away with six receptions, 116 yards, one touchdown, and an overall grade of an 89. Standard stuff, putting up big-time numbers. He's a big-time player. You already know his work. But anyway, you see Dominique Justice coming up with four tackles, two sacks, with two tackles for loss overall grade of a 90 because those two sacks came at very clutch times that guy was absolutely balling as well and then we take a look at rodney edwards man who was our player of the game from last week the swiss army knife himself came away with one interception 77 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown to top it all off with a game rating of 95 could have had a 99 but hey may have to put in a little bit more work to get that one but good performance by rodney edwards man couldn't have asked for more came through clutch time and time again on both sides of the football and you love to see it, man. Just an overall great team win from the Sharks at home. So now, man, we'll go ahead and take a look at the rest of our schedule. For the rest of the season, man, you can see the Sharks are sitting at an even 4-4, four and four, man. And listen, we got four more games left in the season. And 8-4 and four at the end of the year is not looking too bad, especially for our first season. That's just being hopeful. But before we can even start getting to calculating at the end of the year what we might look like, we got USC this weekend. This is a big deal, okay? So currently they are ranked number five in the nation, but that's not it. Beating USC was a goal handed down from the committee to Coach Hughes at the beginning of this year. And it's something that if we can do it, we're going to try with everything we can to complete because we love Coach Hughes. We got to have him here. But anyway, man, if we look at the USC team, we got to start with none other than their star quarterback, Caleb Williams. That's right. Caleb Williams, you already know his work. This guy is the Heisman front runner and a complete package at the quarterback position. He's got the arm. He's got the composure. He's got the mobility. He's got the swag. The whole nine, man. So he will definitely be a focal point and somebody that if we can limit him in any way, we're going to have to try. But it's not only that. USC's defense is top tier, man. They have locked down corners and their defensive line is something to be feared. Quarterback's worst nightmare, if you will. And I mean, getting to the quarterback is something they do for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And when you play USC at home, you don't just play the defense, you play the crowd too. They have one of the craziest crowds in the nation. So stadium noise will definitely be a factor. And look, man, if those reasons that I just gave you were not enough to prove why they're number five in the nation, well then look no further than number five, as you can see on your screen right here. I know you might be thinking, Ice, that's Reggie Bush. He played a long time ago. You're right. I'm not talking about Reggie Bush. I'm talking about his son, Reggie Bush Jr. Yes, that is correct. Reggie Bush Jr. is in this universe and he is that dude. Just like his dad, he's got the speed, agility, the playmaking ability, all the above, man. And I'm telling you right now, he has just the it factor. I'm talking about he's playing against some of the best college athletes in the nation and making them look like fools. So the scouting report is in. The defense has a tall task, as well does the offense. But it's not something we can't handle. You know why? Because we blue sharks and we've been battle tested all year. But this will definitely be our greatest test of the year. And we're going to see how these blue sharks respond. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into a matchup versus USC Trojans at USC. And it's about that time, Shark Nation. You know what time it is? Game time. So let's go ahead and lock it in and take it to the field. Yes, sir, Shark Nation. It looks like the Sharks have brought a little bit of rain with them down to Southern California, where we see the Trojans coming out the tunnel, getting ready for this game. They're sitting at 7-1. and one. The Sharks are sitting at 4-4 four and four as we get ready for the coin toss to determine the start of this game. Sharks are going to select heads or tails. We select tails. We don't win the coin toss, and the USC Trojans select to receive the ball to start this game, and they are looking to assert dominance right off the bat. So here we go, man. Opening kickoff. Fitton's got the football lined up. And we're getting ready to get this game underway. And the kick goes off and we kick it right to Reggie Bush Jr. Who's going to get his first action of the game. He takes the kick return and he breaks a couple tackles and he's still running and finally gets brought down at about the 40. And that is how this game is going to open up with USC starting with the ball on the 39. So first and 10 on the 39, we got Caleb Williams with Reggie Bush Jr. in single back formation. They're going to go with a pitch to Reggie Bush Jr. who's got some space to the outside. Hobart's looking to make a tackle. He doesn't make it. And Reggie Bush Jr. finally gets brought down after a huge opening first gain. 26-yard run right there. Edwards finally able to bring him down. And hopefully this is not what it's going to be looking like all game because he made it look way too easy right there as he was slicing and dicing up the field for his first rush of this game. 
And you can see, man, the Trojans have the second ranked offense in the nation. And that last run right there kind of made you see why. But anyway, it's first and 10, ball on the 35. Trojans doing on this first drive, making it look pretty easy. Caleb Williams is going to drop back deep to his receiver and doesn't quite come down with the connection, but he does come up with an injury to what appears to be his knee on that last play. So that could be a huge development in this game. We'll see what happens as we move on. And so for the time being, we're going to see the backup come into the game. The Trojans are going to go eye formation. They're going to go another pitch to Reggie Bush Jr. off to the right-hand side, who's got some room. He's still shucking and jiving, and he finally gets brought down by Troop, but not until another big game was had. And he's having a really nice game right now. Two rushes with over 20 yards per carry, and it's just making it look way too easy, man. And this just in, Caleb Williams will not return to this game with a bruised knee, and that is a huge update for the Trojans and possibly a break for the Sharks, but we don't know yet because we haven't really seen this next quarterback as he throws a dud over the middle for incompletion. Second and 10, ball on the 20. Reggie Bush Jr. having a great drive so far, and his X factor is going nutso. And they're going to pitch it off to the left-hand side to him again. He's going to show some speed. He's going to stiff arm Ricks and still carrying the ball across the 10 and finally gets chopped down by Edwards. So yet another great run by Reggie Bush Jr. And I tried to tell you guys before this game started, he might be him. But it's also good to note that Edwards had another one-on-one -on -one matchup with Reggie Bush Jr. And he was able to tackle him as he does so again, this time on the four-yard line. So right now, Reggie Bush, four attempts for 58 yards, which is insane. The Sharks have got to find an answer to this outstanding running back if we want to be able to stay in this game. Anyway, it's going to be second and goal with the ball on the three-yard line. Trojans on this first drive looking to go in and put some points on the board. They hand it off, actually pitch it to Reggie Bush Jr. again. For the first time in this game, he loses a couple yards. And the Sharks are celebrating the little minor victories that we might have. But anyway, man, it's going to be third and goal. Ball on the eight. Sharks looking to try to make a stop here. It'll be a big momentum killer if we can get them to settle for three points as the quarterback drops back. And he's going to find his receiver, Hardy, in the middle of the end zone. Four touchdown. Eight-yard touchdown pass to cap this nice drive off. And in the first drive of the game, USC shows that they are who they said they are. And they go in for a score. So although Caleb Williams will not return to this game, we see Clark actually looking like a halfway decent quarterback, man, although he is a backup. Nice composed throw right there to his receiver for a touchdown. So now it's the Sharks turn on offense to try to respond and go down and put some points on the board ourselves. And if you remember from last week, Love Lady is out for the rest of the season, so Thurman will get the start as we hand off to Vincent, who takes it up the middle for a nice gain of about 13 right there. So good little opening play to kind of get some of this momentum back crowd that quiet that crowd a little bit so now it's first and 10 on the 49 and we go right back to the well with vincent up the middle we get a nice gain of about five or six right there so vincent's starting to string together a couple good runs and trying to respond to that big usc touchdown in their opening drive and so we see thurman drop back for his first pass of the game he's going to find glover on the left hand side who comes up with the catch and it's letting you know that's another first down shark starting to put together a nice little drive right there and it's good to see thurman kind of get his feet set and get his first completion of this game. So after that nice throw and catch from Thurman to Glover, we see the Sharks go and shotgun again with Vincent to Thurman's right-hand side. And they're going to go with a direct snap to Vincent, who's got a whole lot of space. He's got a good block from Buckley up at top. He got a stiff arm, and he finally gets past the first down marker and gets brought down after another nice game. So you can see Vincent starting to get in a little groove here, starting to feel a little bit in this rainy game. We might have to depend on the legs of Vincent quite a bit especially with our backup quarterback Thurman in. But so far, so good from Thurman. As we're now looking at first and 10 on the 22, we're going to go shotgun again. Thurman's going to start drifting off to his left-hand side. He might have some space to scramble, but quickly gets tracked down after a short gain of about two right there. So Thurman's not the most mobile quarterback in the world, but he can get, a, get out of the pocket a little bit. So the Sharks now broke the red zone, second and eight, ball on the 20. We see Edwards in the backfield for the first time, and he gets absolutely rocked by the linebacker right there. Came right through the middle, came through the A-gap, and just absolutely let him know why he plays for USC and why they're number five in the nation right now. So that does take us to the end of the first quarter where we have a score of 7-0. to The Trojans are currently up right now, but the Sharks are knocking on the door with the ball on the 21. It's third and nine. We see Thurman in shotgun trying to direct traffic a little bit. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got some pressure in his face. He throws the ball to Higgins in the end zone. It gets tipped, and it's intercepted by Cook. And Cook might have a lane. He's still running. Buckley's trying to track him down. Buckley just might not have the speed. And Cook is at the 20, the 10, and he's high-stepping into the end zone for a pick six. And that is a 95-yard pick six right there by Cook. Just as the Sharks were starting to knock on the door, man, a errant throw. Under pressure from Thurman, gets tipped up in the air, and Cook comes down with the catch, and then he just 
he just does the rest, man. You can see when he caught that ball, he saw a lane, and there was no way Buckley was going to catch him. Give him an A for effort, but he just ain't got it like that, my boy. I'm sorry. Cook was definitely cooking right there. But anyway, the Sharks go down 14-0 now after that huge play by the Trojans defense. And now our backup quarterback might be a little shaken. We gotta have to, we're gonna have to answer in some kind of way. And so we hand off to Vincent, but that is quickly shut down after he picks up only one yard. So now it's second and nine. Ball is on the 20. The Sharks are scrambling for answers. And Thurman is scrambling to his right hand side right now, looking for a receiver. He's not gonna find one. He almost throws another interception. And we have got to cut our composure, or this is going to be a long game. And so it's now third and nine, ball in the 20, and this crowd is going absolutely insane. You can barely hear your own thoughts. Thurman's going to drop back in shotgun. He had a blitz to in his face, and he throws another interception to Cook, who's at the 20, and nobody is going to catch him again. And he takes another interception to the house. That is his second pick six just in the first half of this game. The Sharks are in shambles right now. So almost in the blink of an eye, the Sharks are down back crazy right now. 21 zip in the second quarter. As we see, we handed it off to Edwards, who lost four yards on that play. So the ball is now on the 16. Second and 14, we're going to see Thurman in shotgun. He's going to scramble off to his left, looking for a receiver. He might not have anywhere to go. He's going to throw up to Glover, and Glover is going to come down with an impressive catch and then manage to get one foot down in bounds right over Cook, who's... Might have been a dangerous throw. You can see Cook was all over that, but Glover just showed that he he is who he is too. So we're going to need Glover to step up in a tremendous way if we're going to see any types of improvement in this game. So ball now on the 44. It's first and 10. We see Vincent go off to motion in the right-hand side. Thurman alone in the backfield. Since shotgun, he's going to throw to Glover over the middle. Glover's fighting for extra yards after he comes down with the catch and gets down to about the 25. And that's really what you want to see from Thurman at this point. Just some nice in-rhythm throws. Trying to get his offense back on track as we see Thurman go back in shotgun. Once again, looking for Glover on the left-hand side. But this time that pass is batted down by the cornerback. And so now we're looking at second and 10. Ball on the 25. Sharks knocking on the door again. But we know what happened last time. And we have got to execute and finish this time. As we hand off to Vincent, who's going to cut back and pick up about two yards. So Vincent, who had a really nice first quarter, is kind of struggling a little bit in this second quarter. As we're looking at third and eight, ball on the 23, single back formation. Thurman's going to drop back. He's out of blitz off to his right. He finds Glover over the middle. Glover's still running, and Glover goes in for the Sharks' first touchdown of this game. And that is exactly what we need to see out of Baby Megatron. He has to win his matchup and then make a play, as he did right there. You can see Cook was really had decent coverage, but just not able to keep up with the big guy. And that's the Sharks' touchdown. So the Sharks finally showing some life in this game. The score is now 21-7, to a minute and 45 left in the second. We see Clark dropping back to pass. He's looking for a receiver on the left-hand side. He finds Dixon, his tight end, and he's running, and he's not going to get caught as Edwards tries to bring him down, but he cannot get to him before a 46-yard touchdown. And Clark right now, the backup, is looking more than capable of conducting this offense and putting points up on the board with ease. As you see, just surveyed the field, a clean drop, five-step drop back, found his receiver, let it fly, let his receiver do the rest. Trojans go up another score. It is now 28 to 7 with a minute and 37 seconds left in the second quarter. And right now, the Sharks might just want to try to make it to halftime. And we see Thurman drop back to pass, and he's in all types of trouble again and just has to get rid of it. Barely able to get the throw off. And that's going to take the Sharks to second and 10 on their own 20. It was, you see, Vincent lined up to Thurman's right in shotgun. And we're going to go direct snap once again. And he's going to break one tackle and then finally get brought down after a short gain of about three right there so it looks like the trojans were well prepared for that play it looks like the sharks might have to dig a little deeper in their bag of tricks if they want to be able to move the ball against this tough defense you see we're now looking at third and seven the play clock's winding down this crowd is going absolutely insane and you see thurman drop back to pass once again he's looking for glover over the top and glover went up for the catch but the safety did just enough to make sure he couldn't catch it and which forces the sharks to punt the ball off so the Trojans are going to start this drive on the 48, about a minute and 18 left in the second quarter. Bush in the backfield. They're going to go with a toss to Reggie Bush, who slips through one tackle. He has a first down and then some. He's still running. And Edwards is able to hold him up. And Hubbard finally comes down and makes the tackle. And Reggie Bush Jr. right now is showing why he is one of the top running backs in the nation. Slipping through tackles, showing some speed on the back end of these runs, man. And he's having a phenomenal first half. But anyway, 
Clark's going to drop back to pass again. And he's looking for his receiver, but Hubbard's going to get there first and come up with an interception on the three yard line, giving the Sharks the football back with a minute left in the second quarter with the possibility to try to do something before halftime and get some of this momentum back. Great play right there by Hubbard. And the defense comes up with a huge stop and trying to give the Sharks some momentum before the end of this half. So after the interception by Hubbard, there's good news and bad news. Good news, the Sharks have the ball back. Bad news, we're on our own three-yard line. But anyway, Thurman's in shotgun. He's going to drop back the pass. He's looking for a receiver over the middle. It was Glover who was absolutely covered. So the ball remains on a three-yard line. The Sharks are still in shotgun. Thurman's going to drop back the pass once again, trying to find Glover on the quick slant and almost threw another interception right there. And like I said, the Sharks may just want to be conservative and take this thing into halftime with... The score being what it is and not any worse. But if we know anything about Coach Hughes, conservative is not in his playbook as he goes. Shotgun once again. Thurman in his own end zone. He makes a connection to Glover who gets to the 28. And the clock's still ticking. Almost 40 seconds left on the clock before halftime. Sark still in shotgun. Thurman's going to step up the pass to Glover. Glover's going to make the catch and then get absolutely drilled by the safety who came down and jarred that ball loose from our big time receiver Glover right there. Nice throw and catch, but even better hit by the safety. And so with that, we got 36 seconds left in the second quarter. And the Sharks right now are staying aggressive, trying to potentially get points on the board before halftime as we see Thurman drop back and get sacked after a loss of eight right there and forces the Sharks to take a timeout and stop this clock with 33 seconds left. It's now third and 18. The crowd is going bananas after that huge play from defense right there. And you can see there was just absolutely no blocking. Who knows why we try to go with a play action right there. But anyway, we see Thurman and Shotgun once again. It's third and 18. Empty formation. He's calling some plays, trying to get his guys together. Play clock's winding down. Got Finally gets the snap off. And we see Thurman take another sack deep in the backfield. And it is now fourth and 29 on our own nine-yard line. And you got to imagine, we just got to punt this ball away. Go into halftime with some semblance of pride, but... Like I said, conservative is not in Coach Hughes' playbook, and this could be a big mistake. But it's 4th and 33, ball on our own 5. We're going to see Thurman drop back on 4th down yet again. He's going to go deep to Glover, who's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Glover comes down with it. And now it's a foot race to the end zone, and Glover is going to win this one and take this in for 6 on the absolute Hail Mary last play of the half, a 95-yard touchdown pass to none other than baby Megatron, Jared Glover. Thurman showing his absolute cannon of an arm getting it all the way out to the 50 yard line from the end zone and then glover somehow comes up with the catch and then does the rest winning the foot race to the end zone does a little bit of celebrating at the end of it and we are going to see he's going to get flagged with unsportsmanlike conduct but that does not take away the touchdown but it will affect the extra point attempt and in this rain we're going to see coach who's going to stay aggressive as he doesn't really trust fenton right now to be able to make that and so we're going to try to ride this momentum and go for a two-point conversion as we see Thurman drop back to pass again, he's rolling off to his left. He's got pressure, but he's got Higgins wide open in the back of the end zone. But Higgins was not able to make that catch. And with that, the two-point conversion is no good. And that will take us into halftime with the score being 13-28. to The Trojans up big right now, but the Sharks trying to string a little bit of momentum together. And that is going to take us to the halftime report brought to you by WX Sports Gear, where we'll take a look at some of the things that happened in that first half. And so right now, man, the score is 28 to 13. USC is up big in this first half. And honestly, no one is really surprised by this as they were the number five team in the nation. And you saw a couple of times there, we had Jamarcus Thurman just throw some really bad passes that ended up in being pick sixes, which is the worst possible result. Just trying to get some composure, which he was able to find late in that first half, man. He found uh, Jared Glover quite often, which resulted in a couple touchdowns, man. And we did see Caleb Williams go down in that first half as well, but that did not stop the Trojans show as their backup quarterback was able to keep that train rolling, as well as Reggie Bush Jr., who's really been slicing and dicing our defense all over the field. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the WX Sports Gear player to half, which has to be joe cook for the usc trojans man the cornerback absolutely locked down wearing number 24 might as well be revis island he's had two interceptions taken back to the house for touchdowns and they couldn't have come at worse times the first one was on a really big drive a 95 yard interception return for a touchdown right as the sharks were knocking on the door but this kid has had the matchup that most cornerbacks that have not been able to handle uh facing off against jared glover but he's definitely holding his own not right there is going to earn him player to have
But now we'll go ahead and transition to some halftime adjustments with our coach, Coach Hughes. And he's got three takeaways that we need to be successful in the second half. Number one, we need Thurman to really settle in. We saw the two interceptions go back for pick sixes. He's had some other really bad throws that could have turned into interceptions as well, but just didn't. So we really need him to settle in. Number two, they have a backup quarterback in right now, and we need to be able to get to that quarterback and rattle him a little bit. We know he didn't have as many reps as Williams, and we know this is this is an upside for us that we need to be able to take advantage of. And number three, at this point, man, we just got to play through all four quarters. Anything can happen. We had a lot of momentum going into that, to that um, halftime. And so we just need to ride that and play through these last two quarters and see it to the finish, man. Play Sharks football and just be scrappy and do everything we can to try to get this dub, man. And if we do that, you never know what can happen. It's not looking great right now, but we're not going to give up, and that's for dang sure. But anyway, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the halftime adjustments for Coach Hughes and take us into the second half where the Sharks are kind of looking for answers, but they might have found something with the Glover and Thurman connection. So we'll see how that plays out, but let's go ahead and get back to the action. And as always, man, this report was brought to you by WX Sports Gear. World-class athletes deserve world-class sports gear. All right, Shark Nation, we are back live at the Coliseum where we're going to see USC kick off to the Sharks to start this second half. And the Sharks are down 28 to 13 right now, trying to find some answers to a really strong USC defense as we start this drive off, handing it off to Vincent, who takes it up to the right-hand side and gets a first down. So that's a good thing as his momentum and his ability kind of stalled out a lot in that second quarter and we're going to need a lot more production from our starting running back but anyway good to see that right there so it's now first and 10 ball in the 30 we're going to go right back to vincent who's not going to get much as he's met by the dn on that play and we're also going to see our starting left tackle trent williams go down with injuries so we'll see how that develops as the game goes on could be huge as our o-line is already kind of shaky as it is but on the second down, we're going to see Thurman drop back to pass. He's rolling off to his left. He's got Higgins wide open down the left sideline. Higgins comes up with the catch and finally gets brought down by the USC safety after a big game right there. And he's letting you know it's time to move those chains. That's the first down. Good throw right there by Thurman on the run. And that's what we, like I said, that's what we, we want to see. We want to see Thurman start completing some passes and kind of get his cool about him. No more of them weird interceptions. But anyway, man, it's going to be first down. Thurman's going to drop back to pass again, and he is under pressure. But he's going to step to the inside and then desperately throw this ball out of bounds. Thankfully, there was no um, intentional grounding on that play right there. Definitely could have been. But anyway, man, we're going to see second and 10. Ball's now on the 34. And it looks like we're going to hand off to Vincent right up the middle, who's going to go for about four yards right there. And so now the Sharks are looking at third and six. Ball is on the 30. About two minutes and 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Sharks down two scores and need to get some points out of this drive. It is a must. And so we're going to see Thurman in shotgun. He's going to drop back the pass. He's going to let it fly. And he was looking for Huggins, but Cook almost came up with his third interception on this game. And it is now fourth and six. And Coach Hughes has a big decision to make. And it looks like he's going to continue with his aggressiveness that he had in that first half and go for it on fourth down. And so we're going to see Thurman in shotgun once again. Vincent. Off to his right, you see Glover lined up on the left-hand side. Thurman's going to drop back to pass, surveying the field. Looks like he's going to go over the middle to Higgins, and Higgins has the ball. He comes down with the catch and a first down deep in USC territory. And that right there was a great throw by Thurman. He was under pressure, but he kept his cool and made the pass to Higgins. And nine times out of ten, that pass probably goes to Glover, but he was able to survey the field and find Higgins right there. Sharks are now knocking on the door. Ball on the three. We're going to see a draw go to Edwards which is snuffed out by the USC defense. And this crowd is on their feet doing everything they can to help their defense out and stop the Sharks from going in and scoring another touchdown and trying to get closer to tie this ball game up. As we see a direct snap goes to Vincent, who's got nobody in the way. And he hops, skips, and jumps right into the end zone very easily untouched. And the Sharks are now one score closer to potentially tying this game up. So the Sharks are lined up for a two-point conversion. As if you remember in the first half, they went for two after some excessive celebration by Glover after a touchdown. So we're going to see Thurman roll off to his left. After shotgun, he's going to get tackled, but he's going to be able to punch it in to the end zone and convert this two-point conversion, now making this a seven-point game. And you can see Thurman is absolutely excited, man. He's absolutely hyped, as he should be, man. The Sharks now have a fighting chance in this game against the number five team in the nation. And I don't know about you, but I am starting to smell upset in the air. And so the Sharks right now showing a whole lot of life 
As the score is now 28 to 21, USC has the ball back in their possession with one of the most dynamic running backs in the nation in the backfield. As we see Porter making the catch on the sideline for a gain of three right there. So speaking of most dynamic running backs in the nation, we haven't heard a whole lot from Reggie Bush Jr. in this second half, although the Sharks have had the ball for most of it. But we are going to see a screen go to Brendan Rice. That is the son of Jerry Rice, who makes the catch and gets the ball to the 44-yard line. So it's now third and one. A little bit over a minute left in this third quarter. And we're going to see the ball get handed off to Reggie Bush Jr., who's met by Matthews. But he does do enough to get the first down and keep them chains moving for the Trojans. And you got to imagine we're probably going to see a whole lot more Reggie Bush Jr. as we're getting down to the late stages of this game. USC is holding on to a slim lead, but they do have a big weapon in that backfield as we see them actually hand it off to the fullback who's going to fumble the football and Williams is going to come up with the fumble recovery and the Sharks have the football back with 55 seconds left in the third quarter and this is exactly what we needed and you can see Ricks right there making a the tackle and then ripping that football right out of the fullback's arms who doesn't get that many carries and in the rain that came back to bite the Trojans and now the Sharks have great field position on the 48 trying to go tie this ball game up and so we've been talking about it all game but if you know a college football momentum is everything and right now the sharks have all of it as we see vincent goes right up the middle for a gain of about 12 right there and now the sharks offense is starting to get a little bit of juice to him and let's see if we can't get this drive to end in points man so anyway, we got first and 10 on the 38, about 30 seconds left in the third. We're going to go play action with Thurman rolling off to his right, but he just doesn't have enough time or speed and gets sacked in the backfield for a loss of eight. And that right there is not how we wanted to start off this drive after the big turnover, but hey, we got to do what we got to do. So anyway, man, we're lined up in shotgun and we got Vincent off to the left-hand side. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. Second and 18, we go direct snap to Vincent, who's going to try to use a little bit of his speed as he stiff arms one man to the ground. And then finally gets brought down after a short gain, which takes us into the fourth quarter in this game that nobody expected to be this way, especially after how the Sharks started in the first half. And the Sharks looking to go down and try and tie this ball game up as we see Thurman scrambling off to his left. He might have had the first down if he would have just committed to the run, but he hesitated for just a second and was brought down just short of that first down marker. So now the decision is up to Coach Hughes. Do we go for it, go for a field goal? And keeping it true to what he's been doing all game, we are going to go for this on fourth down. Fourth and four, ball on the 32. This is a huge play right here as we see Thurman in shotgun. Looking like we might have a blitz off to the right-hand side. Thurman is dropping deep back into the backfield. He's looking for Higgins up to the top of the end zone. And Higgins comes up with the catch after a perfectly placed ball on the left outside corner. Higgins was able to come down with the catch with the safety outstretched arm trying to get to that football but just not able to great throw right there by Thurman and this is exactly why we wanted to see him start getting in rhythm the Sharks have now tied this football game up 28 28 and the Blue Sharks have come down to Southern California and are now giving the number five Trojans a run for their money so we see the Trojans start with the ball in the 43. They're going to go play action. Clark surveying the field. He's going to find Stevens, who makes the catch and gets the first down. So USC trying to respond on this drive as they let the Sharks get back in this game. And they can kind of see this starting to unravel. And they need to get control of this game again. And so on first down and 10, we see Bush Jr. gets the handoff. And he goes up the middle, breaks one tackle, and was really one tackle away from taking that thing to the house. But Hubbard came down made a great tackle and so now it's first and 10 ball on the 32 and we're going to see the trojans pitch off to bush on the right hand side once again who knifes his way up for another gain of about eight and that carry right there puts him right at 100 yards on this game which is actually quite surprising because in that first quarter alone i mean he was at 50 yards and the trojans just kind of went away from him but we see using him more right now and he's fighting for more yards as he spins back up the middle and gets another trojan first down and now the Trojans are moving this football with relative ease as they get the ball on the 20 with about two minutes and 40 seconds left in this fourth quarter. And we see Troop finally come in and make a sack on this quarterback, trying to stop some of this momentum that the USC offense has. So it's now second 11. We see Clark go play action, and he's got Rice wide open in the end zone. Rice comes down with the catch but cannot get his feet in bounds, and the Sharks catch a huge break right there. So it's now third and 11, ball in the 21. USC has pretty much been doing what they want on offense up to this point. 
Can the Sharks get a stop? And Clark goes over the top to Rice, who comes down with the catch and gets a touchdown, giving the Trojans the lead again in this game. After a perfect throw right there by Clark, right over the outstretched arms of Williams, who was in pretty good position, just couldn't get to that football. And Rice comes down with the catch and then strides in for the touchdown, giving the Trojans a touchdown lead. Now a seven-point lead with the kick going through the uprights and the USC fans are absolutely loving it. This game has turned out to be quite the contest and now it's the Sharks turn to answer. Do the Sharks have enough in the tank to come back and respond with a score of their own? We see Thurman rolling off to the left-hand side and it was going over the top for Glover but the safety was there once again to make a play on the ball making it second and ten. Ball on the 20 now, just over two minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. As we see a handoff to Vincent, who's got some space. And it looks like he gets the first down as he was met by the safety who came down and made a great tackle right there. So now we're getting into that two-minute territory in the fourth quarter. Everything is riding on this drive right here for the Blue Sharks. We see Thurman in shotgun once again, calling out hot routes, trying to get his guys together. He's dropping back to pass off his back foot. He goes to Glover. Glover makes the catch, but it's only a gain of about three, and that clock is still ticking. The Sharks are down one touchdown. Ball is now on the 33. They need to get this to at least the other side of the 50. As we see, Thurman hits Glover on the middle on a quick slant, and that does exactly that. It gets the ball past the 50 and moves the chains. So we see the clock still running. The Sharks are going to go hurry up, still in shotgun. Thurman's going to drop back the pass. He's surveying the field. He's rolling off to his left. He has some time. He hesitates to keep running, looking for a receiver. And the corner comes up and actually tackles him after a short gain of one. And the Sharks are now forced to burn their first timeout late in this fourth quarter. And it's now second and nine. Ball on the 48. Just under a minute to go left in this fourth quarter. We see Thurman in shotgun as he's looking to pass. He's serving the field, dropping to his left, and he's got Higgins on the left-hand side, wide open, and comes down with the catch and gets brought down at the 12-yard line after a huge completion right there. Absolute great throw right there by Thurman, drifting to his left, but was able to find Higgins on the sideline, who comes down with a huge catch right there. And now with the ball in the 12, the Sharks are going to go shotgun again. They're going to go with a slant to Glover, who comes up with the catch and a touchdown for the Sharks. The score is now 34-35, and the Sharks have a chance to tie this football game up late in the fourth quarter. We called on our backup quarterback, and he came through for us. Great throw right there by Thurman, standing tall in that pocket and finding Glover over the middle for a touchdown. And so now Coach Hughes is going to make an aggressive call, as he's been doing all game, and go for two. And we see Thurman drop back and find Glover again over the middle and gives the Sharks a one-point lead. With only 37 seconds left in this fourth quarter. And Coach Hughes has got to have stones of steel to make that call right there. But it pays off as we see the Sharks convert that two-point conversion and go up one point with only 30 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Can the Sharks defense hold on? They just need one more stop to pull off this insane upset against number five USC. And on this first drive, we see Clark throw to the right-hand side, but is met by Williams right there who was ready for that pass and batted it down. So now it's second and 10, ball on the 43. Exactly 30 seconds left to go and we see Ricks comes in off of a blitz and gets to the quarterback for a sack, forcing USC to burn a timeout right there. Huge play right there by Ricks. Once again, who had that fumble, that forced fumble earlier in the game and we see him show up yet again. So now it's third and 14. Can the Sharks come up with a huge stop? And they do. As Clark found Hardy over the middle, but didn't get quite enough for the first down. And so the game could come down to this. Fourth and two, ball on the 49. 20 seconds left in this game. All is riding on this play right here for the USC Trojans. They have to convert. The Sharks are trying to get a stop. They hand it off to Bush Jr., who's met by Justice. But Bush Jr. is able to muscle his way past the first down marker and get the chains moved. They say football is a game of inches, and that was so Close. But anyway, we got to keep playing as they go hurry up and Clark goes with the option to the left hand side. He's got the first down and then something. He's still running. Nobody's got him down yet. And he finally gets brought down by Hubbard, but not until he gets to the 24 yard line. And with only five seconds left, this is a one point game and the USC Trojans are now in field goal range. 
That was an absolute huge play right there from the backup quarterback. And you're going to see the Trojans go hurry up again and finally take that last timeout with four seconds left on the clock. And you got to imagine it's field goal unit time for the Trojans, and they're going to line up for the field goal unit. This is going to be a 41-yard field goal attempt for the game. And we need everything we got right here to kick us up. It is drifting left, and it is no good. And that is going to be ball game. The Sharks are going to come into the Coliseum and pull off the upset and beat the number five USC Trojans at home in the rain. Can you believe it? And after this gritty performance from the Blue Sharks, Thurman is going to line up in victory formation and take the Sharks to their fifth win on the season, taking their record to five and four, defeating the number five USC Trojans at home in the rain. A absolute gritty performance after being down 21 nothing early in this game. Two pick sixes. Sharks never gave up and pulled off the Cinderella story upset victory. And that is what this program is all about. And you love to see it, man. That is back-to-back -back wins for the Sharks. In-conference wins at that. This right here was a huge upset. A full team effort was required, man. I mean, we were playing with our backup quarterback. But really, it was a whole team effort, man. Everybody chipped in. And you love to see it. And all right, man. Now it is time to go ahead and take a look at our WS Sports Gear player of the game. And it is none other than Jamarcus Thurman, man. Thurman had an absolutely great game. He had a little bit of a rocky start there in the beginning with those two big interceptions. But I'll tell you, man. After those couple mistakes, he really was able to lock it in, make some big plays for his team time and time again, man, and absolutely started to take command of this football team and ultimately pulled off the impossible, man, and led the Blue Sharks to a victory over the number five USC Trojans on their own home turf. This accomplishment cannot be understated, man. If you look at his stats, he went 13 for 25, 378 passing yards, four touchdowns, had a two-point conversion thrown in there too, man. And if you give him a grade, man, I'm going to give him a B plus only B, and it's only a B plus because of those two big time picks. But other than that, man, Jamarcus Thurman definitely came through clutch for the Sharks, man. He had an absolutely great performance. Super proud of this guy right here, man. He stepped up to the challenge, you know, with Love Lady going down and led this team to a victory that really nobody expected us to win, man. So good stuff right there by Thurman. And so Shark Nation, make sure you guys tap in for the next episode because this is where we're actually going to do our post-game recap along with some other cool things tied to the G3SN network and you don't want to miss that. So make sure if you haven't already, go ahead and turn on them post notifications. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you did enjoy the video, man, go ahead and drop a like. And remember, a little bit every day goes a long way. So once you take that first step, don't look back. I'm IC3, 3000 to be exact. I hope I see you guys in the next one. And if I don't, well then go ahead and run this one back.